Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. This episode is going to be yet another update on my CNC project. So for those of you who aren't into CNC, now's your chance to bail. But please subscribe to the channel uh, so you can get updates on future episodes and you know check back from time to time because I will be getting back to talking about building guitars, I promise you. Uh, but right now, it's this machine that is occupying all of my uh, thoughts and energies and, and all my time. So uh, where things currently stand at the moment is, as you can see, I have most of the mechanical structure finished. And what I did was I set up my video camera and I videotaped the entire process of putting the mechanical structure together. And I'm right now editing that video into a sort of a time-lapse video. It's, I'm running it at like eight times uh, normal speed so that you can see the entire process of the machine being assembled. And what I've also done is I have added the uh, spoil board. And this was a fun project. I did this yesterday. Um, it's three quarter inch thick MDF board and I had to drill, um, I think it was 12 holes, which are countersunk to mount the board to the tape, uh, not the board down to the extrusion, the table extrusions. Then I had to drill another 126 holes, chamfer those from the back, and I'm going to install uh, M5 threaded inserts so that I can use that as my clamping system. So I got that much of it done. Uh, I have also just taken delivery of the power and control system that I'm going to use for this machine. And I'm when I do uh, my videos for this, you know, I'm going to do two parts. What the first one will be about the mechanical structure and how that was assembled. The second one will be all about the power and control system and how that was installed. And uh, what I'd like to do in this episode um, is just kind of give you a very brief overview of what that power and control system consists of. Um, once I had finished uh, assembling the mechanical structure of this machine, I was able to weigh the gantry and take some measurements and then use those numbers and plug them into some math formulas in order to determine the uh, torque requirements for the stepper motors that would drive this whole machine. And initially those torque requirements that I came up with were different for every axis. And I could easily select a different size stepper motor for each axis, but I chose instead to go with um, the largest torque requirement and then um, spec out all the motors to be the same size because that uh, simplifies the process of selecting the other components. Um, if you have different size stepper motors, there's a possibility you're going to have to have different size stepper drivers, and that just leads to some complexity in the system. And I wanted to keep everything as, as simple as possible, uh, make it easy to, to wire it up and to configure it. So I ended up selecting a uh, NEMA 23 size stepper motor. And the motors in particular that I chose uh, require a, a three amp output and, or input, and a holding torque rating of roughly 425 um, ounce inches, which um, in metrics uh, translates to three newton meters. And when you're selecting your power and control system for a CNC machine, it all starts with the stepper motors. Once you've determined what you need for stepper motors, you can start to spec out the other components uh, based on that uh, requirement. Now what I did was, I looked at um, torque curves for the different motors that were in the NEMA 23 range, and I found that um, this particular model um, the, uh, with uh, 425 uh, ounce inches of torque had a torque curve that would produce the amount of torque that I need to move this machine at the feed rate that I plan to carve at. So, I'm not going to get into the specifics of how 
I chose that because it gets pretty complicated. But um, that's basically how I chose uh, the stepper motors. And then from there, I was able to calculate uh, the type of stepper drivers that I would need and then the power supply that would be necessary to drive everything, to power everything. And what I found um, really wasn't uh, unexpected uh, because in the market, uh, there are a lot of kits which are engineered for all different size CNC machines and as luck would have it, I found a couple of kits that um, were outfitted with the right components to match the specifications that I came up with. And one of the kits in particular that I settled on was a four axis CNC kit from Long's Motor. And Long's Motor is a company in China there, and there are a, a number of them that sell these kits on uh, the internet. But I did a bunch of research to find out uh, which of these companies is selling the most um, reliable and uh, quality uh, equipment. And Long's Motor seemed to get a lot of good reviews from folks. But what I also found in doing my research is that a lot of these kits, in order to hit a certain price point, uh, they're sold fairly bare bones. Uh, you don't get a lot of documentation or a lot of information. It's assumed you know something about how to, to wire these uh, kits up and make them work. And unfortunately, it's not a matter of just plugging in all the bits and pieces and flipping on a switch. It doesn't work that way. They're much more complicated than that. And as I found in doing the research, a lot of the people who had trouble and who were unhappy were people who had no idea what they were doing when it came to hooking up this equipment. In fact, I saw one video, I'm not gonna uh, link to it or anything like that. If you, if you Google, um, you know, parallel port breakout boards, you might find it. But it was a video where this guy's talking about all these problems he's having with his, um, his kit and getting it set up properly. But he's doing all the wiring on the carpet on his floor, which is like a worst case scenario. Anyway, that's what I found was the situation is that there are so many folks who are trying to do this, but they really have no idea what they're doing and they get themselves into trouble and they get upset about it. But for the people who do understand how to wire this equipment and, and uh, best practices for doing that, they seem to have no trouble with it. So I ended up going with the Long's motor and um, I'm pretty happy at this point uh, with everything that's come in. I'm, I'm pretty confident it should um, assemble and go together fairly well. Uh, I've done some testing and it seems to be, uh, everything seems to be working fine. So um, now I have installed one of the NEMA 23 motors on my uh, x-axis just to make sure that all the clearances and everything were good and as luck would have it, it's, it's I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it's a very uh, sturdy mount and should work fine. So um, what the kit itself consisted of were the four stepper motors, four stepper drivers, two power supplies, and then a breakout board. And the breakout board is a typical uh, DB25-1205 parallel port breakout board. What that means is all the, the stepper motors and drivers will wire into that and then to connect the breakout board to my computer requires one of these. Now if you were doing computer work back in the 1980s, you'll know what this is. This is a DB25 parallel port uh, connector cord and these are how we used to connect our computers to a printer. Uh, however, this is a technology which is wildly obsolete. In fact, I don't think computers have been manufactured with uh, parallel port connections for 20, 30 years. So that poses kind of a problem because a lot of these CNC machines require that you connect to the computer with a parallel port cable. And since we don't have the, the parallel port connections anymore, uh, guys who are, are uh, using CNC have to come up with some creative solutions to connect their computers to those breakout boards. And uh, one of the ways to do it is you can try and source an old computer that has a parallel port connection. But when you do that, uh, you're forced to settle with um, 
you know, antiquated, slow uh, internet connection and uh, an obsolete um, old uh, operating system. So if you want to use a new computer, what you have to do is you have to get a desktop computer that has a motherboard with a open PCI slot so that you can snap in a parallel port adapter card. Then you can connect the PC to the breakout board. Well, that's just, you know, it's such an old school technology. There's got to be a better way. And there are a few options, other options that um, you can uh, consider. Uh, and this is especially helpful for people who want to use a laptop because with a laptop, you can't put in a PCI uh, parallel port adapter card. So one of the options is to use a uh, parallel port to USB adapter that's specifically designed to work with CNC. Most of the off-the-shelf um, adapters won't work because they just aren't um, designed to work and to handle CNC communications. Uh, the one adapter that I do know of that works quite well and gets really great reviews and is very popular with the CNC community is the UC100 adapter card or adapter plug. And um, it's, it's designed specifically to work with CNC communications, but it's fairly expensive. Um, they typically run um, around $100, $110. And then you have to buy um, controller software on top of that. So you would also have to purchase a license for either um, uh, Mach 3, Mach 4, or their own UC CNC software. So in the end, to be able to plug your computer into your CNC machine with a USB cable, you're looking at spending, um, you know, 180 to 230 bucks. So it gets, it's fairly expensive. Another option is just to replace the parallel port uh, breakout board with a breakout board that supports uh, USB or uh, Ethernet. And again, there's there's only a few of them on the market that I know of that are um, that work reliably and and um, are favorable uh, to CNC. And Again, they're going to cost you anywhere from $180 to $250, and then, of course, you still have to buy the controlling software on top of it. So as you can see, trying to connect a laptop or a PC to your CNC machine with a USB cable can get really expensive. And, um, you know, there are knockoffs for all those products on Alibaba and AliExpress and um, eBay, but... Uh, based on the research I've done, that is definitely a buyer beware situation because a lot of those products simply don't work or they are so difficult to get them to work that um, it's just not worth the trouble. So uh, if you want a, a reliable solution, you're going to have to pay a fair amount of money to do it. But in doing all this research, I came across another unique solution, one that I'm very interested in and one that I've decided to um, put to the test on my CNC machine. When I was using uh, my X-Carve, uh, that uses a simple technology uh, based on the Arduino Uno um, chipset with a, um, it's a CNC G-Shield and the Arduino Uno is loaded with a controlling software uh, or code called Garble. And Garble is a full-featured CNC control solution that is um, very popular with consumer-grade CNC machines because it's open source and it's free. The only disadvantage to it is it only supports at this time three axes. And, um, now, fortunately, you can control four motors with it, but you can only control three axes. Now, my machine is a three-axis machine. It will have four motors, um, one on the Z, one on the X, and two on the Y. So garble would work. Um, I don't ever intend to add a fourth axis to this machine. So garble would work. Um, but the other problem with uh, garble is on the hardware side, and that is the Arduino 
and um, CNC G shield. Those G shields, that's where all the drivers for the stepper motors are located. And unfortunately, those drivers don't have enough power to drive you know, a big NEMA 23 stepper motor. Uh, they work primarily with the NEMA 17 and the very small NEMA 23s. But if you're looking to power a bigger motor like this, those G-Shields just simply don't put out enough amps to, to run one of those. But there is another solution that I've come across from a hardware standpoint, and I discovered this while doing research on all this stuff. And what that technology is, is this little device. This is an Arduino Uno uh, board, but attached to the top, rather than a CNC G-Shield, this is a DB25 adapter board. And what it does is this adapter maps out all the pin assignments for the uh, DB25 breakout board and assigns them to the Arduino Uno's pins, um, to the appropriate pins for CNC operations. So the way this works is all I have to do is plug the cable in and then plug the other end of the cable into the breakout board and then just plug my USB into the Uno. Then I can use the garble uh, controller language, which is um, installed onto the Arduino Uno. And by using an interface software like UC um, or uh, U, uh, Universal G Code Sender or Chili Pepper, and there's a couple other ones out there, I can actually um, tweak and adjust and set the parameters for my CNC machine based on how I set up the drivers. So I should be able to run this machine using Garble and this little $20 adapter board. Now, I have no idea whether or not this is actually gonna work. This is sort of a, a test for me. However, I have talked to um, uh, other folks who have used it successfully, and I've seen there's a, a few videos up on YouTube where uh, folks have actually attached these to their CNC machines and it's worked just fine. So. Um, I'm right now kind of sitting on the fence between optimistic and pessimistic, but I'm starting to lean towards optimistic. And my feeling is, you know, if this doesn't work at all, if I just can't get it to, to run this machine the way I want to run it, I'll just pop this thing off, put my tail between my legs and, and pick up a UC100 adapter and go with that because we know for sure that that does work. So, um, but we'll see. This is I'm really intrigued by this, and I'm hoping that it will um, function properly. And one thing I should mention is the shield is a kit. You have to solder in all the pins, but it's really simple to do. And I'll put a link to where you can um, purchase one of these, or at least check out what this uh, little device is. And um, you know, maybe it's something you could consider if you're thinking about adding CNC to your shop and want to do it on the cheap. So. But that's kind of where things stand right now, and I'm, um, I've got a couple of other items still coming in before I can um, really push forward and, and finish this machine. I'm hoping that I will be able to do some testing, hopefully by the end of next week. Hopefully in the next episode you'll be able to see me moving uh, the gantry and the access around, but it's just going to depend on um, how quickly some of the items I'm still waiting on get in. But uh, that's where things stand right now, and um, until the next episode, I uh, hope you have a great week.